I'll explain. Okay, so we're given a triangle, right? Red, white, and blue, yeah. Um, we're given a triangle. What they ask us to do is find the find the missing parts of our triangle. So guys, we need to kind of like trans transform ourselves back into geometry class and think of one of the most bait, um, one of the most crucial things that you needed to remember in geometry was that all the angles in a triangle added up to 180, 180 right? So we're going to use that to help us out solve this problem. We can also use that for trig identities. But to show you this problem, I'm going to get through this really as quickly as possible. Well, yes, since this equals 90 degrees, you can also say that the other two angles are going to add up to 90 degrees as well, correct? Because obviously 90 plus 90 has to equal 180, right? So if I say that this one is going to be 70 degrees, yes, yeah, so what I was saying is, well, if this one's already 90, then these two have to add up to 90 as well. So 71 plus what is going to give me uh, 90 degrees? And you can say 19. So I can quickly just say that's 19 degrees, right? Now the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out what our A is and what our C is. Now there's two different ways, actually there's multiple ways we can figure out what our A is. Right? And I'm actually going to uh, write all of the ways down so you guys can see it does not matter. All right, Because I want you guys to calculate them in your calculator when you guys are testing out just so you guys can see all the different possibilities. I'm not probably not going to go through all of them, but we'll work it out. So ladies and gentlemen, um, if I want to use my angle of A and I want to find what my missing angle A is, how do, so I'm going to write, well, angle A, what do these two side lengths represent? A, the side length A is going to be the opposite side, and 24 by B is going to be my adjacent side. So what trigonometric function works with opposite and adjacent? Tangent, right? So I could say tangent of angle A equals a over 24, right? Okay. How about, let's say if I wanted to use the B angle, because I know what that angle is as well. So again, if I look at this now, 24 is the opposite of my angle B, and now A is my adjacent side. So if I wanted to use B as my angle, I would use tangent of 71 degrees, this should be 19, not A, tangent of 71 degrees equals 24 over A. Why is that 19? Because angle A is 19. Oh, why did we figure that? <laughs> I don't even know which angle Like I was saying, it does, it's not going to matter. All right? Now, it doesn't matter. You can use, if I use, let's say just pick an angle. This would be the best thing. Okay, if you just pick A, then you know you have to use tangent for opposite over adjacent. Mm -hmm. If you just say, you know what, I'm just going to pick B. Then again, you have to use tangent, but just understand that 24 is now your opposite, and A is now your adjacent. Well, well, what, yes? Like, well, what if you wanted to use cosine or sine? Okay, well you can't use cosine or sine, and the reason being is cosine or sine deal with what? Your hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse, yeah. Do we have the value of our hypotenuse? No. No. So actually we could use sine and cosine. Um, we could actually use the cosine of we can actually use the cosine of A and the sine of B. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get, I'm kind of getting a little convoluted here with all the information I'm throwing in. But let's just figure out the sine of A then, and then I'll show you how to find C. Okay. okay? But for right now, just to find out what A is, let's just use our two tangent functions. Um, we can't use cosine or sine to find the value of A right now. We can only use tangent. Yes? And we prove angle C? When we, we show find angle C, I'll show you what the functions to use for angle C. So ladies and gentlemen, to solve for A, I would choose to use angle, I would choose to use this tangent because it's a lot easier to solve for A when A is your numerator than when A is your denominator, right? So it's probably gonna be easier to solve it this way using the tangent of angle A because therefore A equals 24 times tangent of 19 degrees. Now, if you're one of those people that said, oh, well, Mr. McLogan, I like, I chose the B one. Well, that's fine but you just have a little bit more work on your hands. And you guys can plug in your calculator just to make sure to prove to me that they still are the same. So if you guys have A is equal to 
24 over tangent of 71 degrees. So it's a little bit more difficult, guys, to solve for A when it's on the bottom, because what do you have to do? You have to multiply A on both sides, then I have to divide by tangent on both sides. So A equals 24 tangent of 71 degrees, as well as A equals 20 or 24 tangent of 19. That's why when I say, you know, it doesn't matter which one you pick, but one's usually gonna be a little bit easier to solve for than the other one, okay? So if you guys notice, when you plug these in, you're gonna get the exact same answer. Which here I get 24 times uh, tangent of 19 degrees. I'm getting 8.26 rounded. Anybody else? I got, let me see, when I did it, I got 8.26 yeah. Okay, so therefore if I have 8.26 rounded. So ladies and gentlemen, now, guess what? I have all the angles and I have two legs of my triangle. So Miranda, how could I find out what my hypotenuse is? Please put that away. Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. Right, you could also use the Pythagorean theorem yeah, I mean, to figure that out, right? However, let's say you wanted to use sine or cosine or whatever else. Well, if you wanted to use sine or cosine, think about it this way. Let's look at angle A. If I want to use sine or cosine, I could actually use both of them. It doesn't matter. Um, if I want to use a sine, that's going to be, so I can say sine of A equals, sorry, not sine of A, but it's sine of 19 degrees, equals 8.26 over your hypotenuse, which is C. Or you could say the cosine of 19 degrees equals 24 over C. Okay, so if you want to solve it using your angle A, which is 19 degrees, you could use sine or cosine. Or you could use Pythagorean theorem, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get the same answer. Or let's say you want to use angle B. Just, I just want to throw these out here for you. If you guys use angle B, angle B you could use cosine would be 8.26 over that, over your hypotenuse. So you can say the cosine of 71 degrees equals 8.26 over C. Or you could do the sine of 71 degrees equals 24 over C. All four of these answers are gonna still give you the exact same number for the hypotenuse, as well as if you do the Pythagorean theorem, all right? And yes, like you said, probably the Pythagorean theorem is probably gonna be the simplest way for maybe if you wanna do it. Yep. Um, or actually, let me see which one I wanna do. So I can just do 24 divided by sine of 71. I'm getting 25.38 rounded. Anybody else get that? Uh, yeah, wait, I got 24.38. 24 divided by sine of 71. I got 25.38. I'll just go and check my work, but I'll just, round, I'll just keep with it. So therefore, C equals 25.38. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of different ways you can go ahead and solve these problems. I just wanna kinda throw that out there. You can use either one of them. You just need to know what your um, trig identities or your trig functions are, how they relate to your triangle, and then there's not one way, to, not one right way to do it. You can do it with multiple different ways. Is there any other other questions for this? Yes. Is there a way to find the angles? Yes, there is a way to find. 